from one side and expel it from the other side. And it, these were toys that were easily available. And uh, he himself has written, these are what, these are his own words, that he would break the toy to find out why this is happening. At that point of time, he didn't know the principle of the siphon. And uh, so he has written that th it was this simple toy that excited his mind and that made him, uh, that made him uh, uh, talk about, uh, think about science. So this is just a diabetic elephant or di diabetic horses and all kinds of things. But this is how he, was, he got interested in, in uh, science. So, usually, normally, one acquires the religion of one's birth. But if you are a man of conviction and you are convinced that there is another, another way in which you can do greater service, you will do it. So he was born, of course, a Hindu, but at the age of nine, he took to Sikhism. And when he went to college in Lahore, he was greatly influenced by the Brahmo Samaj. And then he became a Brahmo Samaji. Towards the end of his life, he again took to Sikhism. And he has written one of the first, uh, as I will show you, the first uh, uh, <coughs> treaties on uh, uh, how to manage Gurdwaras. Next please. So, uh, he put, he was a professor of chemistry, but he put all his knowledge into, he applied his knowledge. He of course started a, a workshop attached to the Punjab Science Institute in 1888 and was able to get lathes and other instruments from the railways when they were not they were not in good condition but he would get them and use them and in this case he did two things for schools and colleges in the Punjab they started making glass scientific equipment pipettes small small uh, uh, small devices and these were so accurate that up to now the Punjab was entirely dependent on British imports but his small company that was established in Lahore started making these glass instruments for schools and colleges and it was it, it, they, they, he, he made a big name and he, he made a lot of money in, in, in doing this also he did he, he built one of the first sulfuric uh, <coughs> acid factories in Lahore and from there also because you can imagine to educate five sons in, in the UK at, at that point of time required a lot of money. So it's not only it's not only doing good but it's also generating enough wealth to do good and uh, so this is one of the one of the a aspects of a person's life that if you that there are multi aspects to your life it's not only science it's not only academics but it's the whole life that you are living and he actually lived lived that life in all its uh, ways next day. So he was greatly influenced by a uh, special teacher. I won't go into this, just to tell you that sometimes teachers influence you so much that you take to a subject, you start liking that subject. And uh, this was a special teacher, uh, Kashi Nath Chatterjee, uh, who was in law. So this is very interesting, uh, Professor Grover has mentioned this. <laughs> so in 2017, a book was published, a prize-winning book, 
by a German historian uh, known as Amelia Bonia. She was an Oxford scholar. And this book uh, was on how the telegraph came to India. It's called News of the Empire. And there are two pages devoted to Ruchiram because of a very special uh, a very special thing that he did. You know, these days, most of the uh, weather stations are connected by computer. In those days, in 1885, since the British had introduced telegraphy, 120 uh, weather stations were connected by the telegraph. He was about 22 years old and suddenly one day the telegraph, the, the data from the telegraph from these 120 stations started coming showing that there was an impending cyclone in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, these days you can't even imagine a 22 year old or 23 year old being given the responsibility. But he was there all alone. His superior was not there. On the basis, on the basis of the data that he got, he himself issued a warning to all the neighboring places that a, a, a very high-powered cyclone is coming, and uh, it came. It caused a lot of destruction, but because of his timely uh, a caution. Uh, this this uh, the ultimate calamity was uh, was uh, same, and this book takes the fact that Ruchi Ram was one of the first, basically, to apply the data from the uh, apply the data from the uh, uh, <coughs> from these weather stations for such a good purpose. So he was a professor of chemistry and he was much liked but as, as what happens is he was an Indian and during the latter part of his life, uh, of his uh, academic life when he was about to retire and he, there was a post of professorship and a young Britisher who was a very young, young chemist, he superseded him. Uh, uh, this old professor uh, Ruchi Ram, he superseded him and uh, uh, Ruchi Ram was absolutely devastated that such a young person should uh, <coughs> supersede him and so he, uh, he, he gave up teaching at that point of time. But as you'll see, that was really very interesting because, next please. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what happened, but let me tell you what he is very well known for. So he used to charge one annum for his lectures. So you may say, why charge anything, you know, for, for a popular lecture? But this was part of the principles that he had. And he talked about a variety of subjects. Subjects that people, the common man, were not, were not really aware. For instance, Elements of weather, soap making, the water Lahori is right before 1880. This is very interesting. Before 1880, Lahori is drank water like any other city. But in 1880, Lahore got, got a pipe system of water. And as is usually the case with us, the local people in Lahore distrusted this water. They didn't want to drink from piped water. So what he would do, whenever he went to the bazaar, he would make a point to drink that water from the pipe. And people would, you know, uh, shun him. And he would say, this water is better than the water that you are drinking. So he, this, this talk is basically on the advantages of, you know, that if, if there's modern technology and you know you're convinced that it's good, then it's your duty to convince others. So this was one of the points that, uh, so no, no, 
pure and impure air, electricity in the service of man, electroplating, glass making. How does the telegraph speak? The Punjab and the many, many. And usually, even at one hour per ticket, a number of people used to come. And uh, this is one of the abiding legacies of a man who did so many things. So as I was saying, he wrote a number of books. This book, I have this Awakening of Asia. I don't know whether they have a copy in Punjab University or not. This is very interesting. So it's not only he was a chemist. This book basically talks about economics. It talks about a German economy, the German bank, the Deutsche Bank, and how the Deutsche Bank gave a lot of money for building a, a train line right from Europe across Asia into India and other parts. So it, it's, there was a, there's always an economic aspect and he was very interested in the economic aspect and uh, this book basically examines the economic aspects uh, and the commercial aspects of uh, this kind of activity. Next case. So, <clears throat> so this is basically his class, uh, class notes on organic chemistry. As you can see, it's rupees one, two pesa, and uh, it was published in 1914. I still have a copy of this, but uh, this used to be. Uh, quite prevalent at that point of time. So he was, uh, during Lala Lajpat's life, he wrote a forward, Ruji Ram, this is it. Next please. So as I said, he was very interested in, in anything new. Uh, if he felt that it was worth doing, he would do it. So many people are very reticent, they don't like doing things new. But he became a Brahmo Samaji. That was, there were a lot of liberal minded uh, people in Lahore at that time who were Brahmo Samaji. He became a Brahmo Samaji. And uh, he's written a number of books on what they did, what the philosophy was. And uh, uh, so, th this is another history of the Brahmo Samaji. So, he wrote to the British cabinet mission, Nusi Ram Sani. So, uh, you can see the chapters. This was done in 1946. The, they are about to, about to go. So, this is, these are the contents. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is not an ordinary man. It's not only chemistry, he did everything. So, this is the what I was telling you about. Struggle for reform in Six shrines. This is the first. This is the first uh, systematic analysis of how six shrines can be managed. And this is a, a big thing. Uh, uh, this was published in Amritsar. Uh, this is a really. I, I read it. It, it. It's. It's the first. It's the first. Uh, uh, first book. On the management of good waters. So, coming to his science, as I said, when he was superseded by a young Britisher, he left government college and decided to go to Germany. He went to Germany in August 1914, and as you know, in August 1914, the First World War was breaking through. So he went to Heidelberg, talked to the professor there. The professor there said, run away from Germany, don't stay here. I have a friend, Rutherford, he's in Manchester. It's safer for you to go to Rutherford in England than to stay here in Germany. Overnight, Ruchi Ram left Heidelberg and moved to, moved to Manchester. Manchester in 1914, as you will see just now, was like 
the cradle of physics the cradle of physics in the in the 19 in the 20th century and i'll show you why he wrote two papers there as you can see one was the photographic action of alpha beta and gamma rays and the paper itself was communicated by Ernest Rutherford and you will see big names Niels Bohr was a lab mate at that point of time so this actually was uh, one of the first papers he wrote another paper this again was communicated by <coughs> uh, Ernest Rutherford the scattering of alpha particles by gases So it says Professor Government College Lahore, but he has left Lahore. And as you can see, that again, Niels Bohr is mentioned uh, as a lab and as a help. So these are basically historical documents. And uh, very recently, I was able to find his original plates in my uncle's home. These are plates. These are photographs of alpha particles taken in 1914 that have survived so far. These are photographs, so you can see tracks of alpha particles. This handwriting is that of my uncle, so it's it's a uh, so obviously my uncle Wilbur was in England at that point of time when his father had come, and uh, it seems to me. That there was a, a very close interaction between Birbal and his father when it came to Ruchiram's research. Coming to the end, I just like to tell you that we were talking about his many, his many, uh, many aspects. But as I said, 1945, he has written to my father that. I remember I sent a copy of my Economic History of India to Sir Sir Vijay Raghavachari, <clears throat> and this is a typical letter that all students expect from their fathers when they are abroad. Money. So in this, Ruchi Ram says, "My dear Mulk and Manohar, I close a draft of seventeen pounds. I will send a little more." Uh, Uh, 25 pounds. That is 20 pounds for Manohar, uh, Manohar's monthly allowance, and five dollars, five pounds more extra. I hope Moore has by this time set in a satisfactory thesis. So there are many vice chancellors here and many candidates. Even in those days. What happens today happened at that time. This is what my father, my grandfather wrote to my father. We are not surprised that the selection committee has been postponed. It would not be bad if the selection was put off for a couple of months longer. You could do a more research work. I hope you will be able to do another paper in a couple of months. Do send stopwatches. Not more than 15 shows, and uh, <clears throat> this is a, a little bit about me when I was four, five years old. I couldn't help but writing it. Children made me not a small contribution to my pleasure. A show's part being not the least. I know he is still fishing in the carefree sea of life, so I'm still fishing. <laughs> So he went to Heidelberg. I don't want to. I already told you, Fayans was a great, uh, great physicist. He sent him to Rutherford. So this is at Manchester. This is uh, my uh, Ruchi Ram as he looked there. My Lord, my one of my uncles, and this is Bieber. This of course is Rutherford. That says uh, lab. But what I want to show you is the last slide. Just look at this, Manchester, 1914. Just <clears throat> so 
So you have J.J. Thompson who discovered the electron, Geiger, Mosley, Craig, Rutherford himself, Niels Bohr, Chadwick, Blackett, uh, Lovell of the telescope. So, so that was the time when all the great minds were in one place. And whether you call it luck or you call it the fact that he was superseded by a young Britisher that led him to this, whatever. But the end result was this, that he was there at the right time and he did something about it. Last slide, I think. So, as I said, our journey started in Bela, a very old town. And for the time being, ends here. Thank you very much. I made a start with the honor school system that is practiced in Punjabi as the given today. Proposal for that was not written by someone from this young person who superseded Mr. Hillister. He wrote the proposal for College the honor school system was adopted by the Punjabi in the year 1993. So, you know, things happen, good, bad, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request Professor Kashmir Singh for a